And we're going to begin today um, with Jackie Craven. And Jackie's someone I met years ago at the Palm Beach Poetry Festival and have been delighted to follow um, publication after publication as you became very successful. Um, she writes poetry and prose inspired by art and steeped in magical realism. She's the author of the poetry collection, Secret Formulas and Techniques of the Masters, which was published by Brick Road Poetry Press. And she has two chapbooks, Cyborg Sister, published by Headmistress Press, and Our Lives Became Unmanageable, which won an Omni Don Award for Fabulous Fiction. Her poetry appears in Agni, Beloit Poetry Journal, Massachusetts Review, New Ohio Review, Pleiades, Plowshares, Poet Lore, Soflo Pojo, Swim, and other journals and anthologies. Our, after completing a Doctor of Arts from the English Department at U Albany, she worked for many years as a journalist covering architecture, art, and travel. She lives in upstate New York and in Cocoa Beach, and she's online at JackieCraven.com. Thank you, Jackie, for joining us. Stage is yours. Okay, well, well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and, and very thrilled to be sharing a stage with Tennyson. I can't wait to hear Tennyson's reading. Um, but I will read um, uh, a little bit from my uh, full-length collection. Well, one thing from the chat book and, and a couple new things. Um, I'm going to put in the chat a link to my website that has you know links to the books if anybody's interested uh since some of my stuff is kind of heavy i'm going to start off with something totally ridiculous this is just to lubricate me uh this this poem will make absolutely no sense you're not going to understand it it's a jabberwocky poem um, so just go with the flow. In which I try to leave my husband, but cannot find the words. You fall oxa, you fall oxa. See ya, how proof you. In catch, I catch like a rack, and my dry dot hours all sticks and pipes, and never once did you, zoo who. Log me, I foos for you. Yes, I foos to the C Rexel sky and still you coglock nests, you with your rock filter, you with your guttle liquor nicks tax as a pretzel jail. Log me, there's a rock in your sit pit mat, all pimple ick and clench, a frog in your kick. What did I ever milk in your monkey pee jaw? Log me, I sickly to gat you. I pan shag at you, I sickly nan tiptoe. You can girdle your mob for all I'm you. Log me, log me, you duck or quack. I'm jaw, but still I foos to the C Rexel sky. So that's my my episode of silliness. And uh, I'm going to jump right from that into misery. Uh, this misery unmoors us. My misery sleeps through sunrise, sheets twisted, comforter crumpled on the floor. I've been up for hours, brewing coffee, jingling spoons, but nothing can rouse her. Not the revelry of sparrows in the eaves, not the blush of light on our bedroom wall, or the sultry aroma rising from the mug I bring. My misery lies on her back and listens to her clock radio, glaciers weeping, pathogens carousing, and in Martha's vineyard, manatees washed ashore. My misery floats on the river sticks. I smooth her sheets and fold hospital corners, every crease a lumbering disappointment. I'm a manatee making origami, and she's a pillow stuffed with sparrows, plush and nettlesome. They warble beneath the weight of burning ice. Polar bears sit on her chest. For only $9 a month, we can save a polar bear, but can we afford to restore the world? 
One doomed eye creaks open. Let's, just like that, let's, and my lungs swell with feathers. Okay, I, I'm going to read uh, several poems from Secret Formulas and Techniques of the Masters, which I mostly wrote in Florida when I was staying down in Cocoa Beach. Uh, I grew up in a family of artists and my mother was rather eccentric and she was a person with many secrets. So after she died and I was packing up her things, I studied her paintings as an adult and tried to unravel some of her secrets by studying her artwork. And some of these poems are ekphrastic poems and some are family poems. Uh, it's a mix, uh, but basically it's a collection of poems about a writer who, who searches for messages in, in paintings. Uh, old woman with goose, 30 by 24. Oil. When I was a swirling minnow, my mother filled this canvas with loam and olives, layer after layer of brown aromas. She must have felt queasy, perched on her artist stool, swooping her palette knife side to side while I swam inside her. I I learned to walk on land and saw how she glazed buff over blue, dusk over amber, colors stroked on, scraped away. She couldn't make the paint behave. She wanted a Reuben scene like the one that inspired Yates, wings, thighs, a shudder in the loins. But the tossing truth of me, moving, growing, seasickness, and a smell of pea and turpentine and her and the strange heart beating beneath her ribs. Instead of Lita, she painted an angry crone, gnarled fingers grasping a blur of white feathers. I believe she'd like to wring the bird's neck. Those fierce eyes follow me across the room. So, uh, you know, our, our family had many secrets and ways of, and one way of hiding uh, unpleasant and embarrassing truths is, is drinking. And we were certainly a drinking family. Uh, alcohol played a huge role in the family dynamics. And it also became a kind of metaphor for, for the poems as, as you go through the book. And the title, Secret Formulas and Techniques of the Master, is very similar to the title of a classic uh, book that came out in the 1930s. And it became sort of famous in the art world uh, during the 40s and 50s. The author of that book, whose name was Jacques Meraget, claimed to have re rediscovered the long lost formula used by uh, old Dutch masters to bring trompe realism, fool the eye realism to the paintings. And, and this, this formula, it was like a gel-like substance. It looked like honey. And the artist would mix it in the paint and it would allow them to glaze colors over in a nearly transparent sheen. So my mother was an enormous fan of this and she started making these recipes in, in her kitchen. And of course it was highly, highly toxic. It was made with lead and various chemicals. Um, and so when I was a kid growing up, we had these toxic fumes billowing from the kitchen, which in itself became a kind of metaphor um, for what can happen in a, in a sort of a dysfunctional family. But uh, the, the secret formula as the actual secret formula that um, Jacques Merger had written about, and then the secret form, formula of the alcohol together became the, the sustaining metaphor through, through the book. 
The temperature reaches 102. The North Pole is melting and Antarctica and in Greenland glaciers break away. My own small garden fills with black rain and the scent of mud and fermentation, heavy aromas from long ago. I'm a feverish child at the top of the stairs, dreaming my mother in the room below, hearing the shush of her slippers and a metallic ping. Ice in her glass or the clasp to the door, she opens wide enough to let the night whoosh in. I'm asleep, but awake enough to see her sway, a liquid dance with the wind, and the wind becomes a phantom made of whiskey and steam. Through drowsy eyes, I see her roll back her head and open her mouth to drink him in, and I hear an owl in my throat. I'm trying to cry, stop, but why should my mother listen to me now? She's a lipstick smudge, a thirsty moan, a flow wanting nothing from life but to melt. I press my face against the wall and dream of breaking levees, houses that drift out to sea, plaster damp with the phantom scent. My eyes are closed, yet I see him plume across my world, dark and bright as oil. He'll kill my mother first. And then my knees will bend, and in the end, I'll marry him. I know this, even after the wind dies down and I wake a grown woman, flushed and queasy but safe, in a sun-drenched room, every window and door latched tight. Okay. And I think it's time for something lighter, uh, another piece of silliness. Still life with stuffed olive. Silly Cyclops, amphibious friend. I'm on to you, bebopping in your tight green skin, ogling the cocktail onions. Oh yeah, my tongue knows your nippled form, the circulian way you tumble about, wafting the scent of coriander, vermouth vermouth and brime. Swim, you say, and your karaoke voice sloshing against the rim. And indeed I would swim all the way to Athens or the Galapagos, splash in the Angostura bitters, explore your tunnel of deep forgetting. But my naughty tadpole, I've seen your salty somersaults. Watch the flicker of your pimento tail become your clitoris, become your belly button, become your mouth, become your eye, become. What then? Night after night, you flip past my lips singing, fly me to the moon, only to dive for the crotch of my nearly empty glass where every time you drink the last drop, the best drop. So let's see, I think, um, I think it's time to move on. Um, last, last year I came out with a very short little chat book um, through Headmistress Press and it's Cyborg Sister. And it's, it's a fairy tale, you know, j just 20 very short poems that uh, tell the story of a, uh, girl who is half human and half robot. That chapbook grew out of a single poem. The poem had run in Pleiades, but what I did was I expanded it accordion style to make a chapbook out of it. I'll read the, the short version that had appeared in a journal. Cyborg sister, older than me and too iridescent to leave her room. She never answers my knock. I want to crack the door and touch the edge of her secrets. She eats shadows in bed. If I close my eyes, I can feel a chitter and thrum of ears, each one small as a baby's tooth. 
So much artistry went into her construction, tweezers trembling and swaying light, mama breathing, careful, careful, daddy unraveling magnificent intestinal springs. Then the oily scent of her maturation as her steel frame expanded, polymer threads frayed. Her skin grew thin at the elbows and knees. She must have writhed inside herself. No way to grow until mama stitched zippers in the seams. Now I hear the rustle of her molting and I imagine a perfect pointed toe stepping out. She hides deprecated apparel in the basement closet. No one speaks of the empty ghosts, an array of sizes and styles drooping from wire hangers. I touch a translucent sleeve and wonder where she, whether she would mind if, but I don't need to wear my sister's castaways. Upstairs, a sewing machine whirs and mama calls my name. Look what I've made for you. See how it flatters your shape. Okay, I um, I am working on a, a collection. I've been working on it for a couple of years now, and it hasn't found a home yet. But I'm homing in on. I think I think it may have a home soon. Uh, so I will read uh, a couple of things from. Uh, that that new i hope will become a book the, the poem appeared in in plowshares but again just like i did with cyborg sister i took a single poem and and spread it apart to make a big long thing from the shorter from the shorter uh one just for once i want to witness the going away I want to catch the moment, cup it in my hands, see it blink and blow. But in this dream, the red line shrieks from the terminal hours before I arrive. Or I reach Port Canaveral after the boatswain's final call. I'm alone on the pier, waving goodbye, waving come back, waving until my watch slides from my wrists and tumbles into the foaming wake. I'm so thirsty. Thirsty the way my father must have been in his hospice bed. I dab his mouth with a moist sponge. I tell him, here I am, I'm right here. And so I am, except I turn to read the clock. I miss the instant of his leaving. The Timex watch my mother gave me in high school tisks from the floor of the harbor. Can't you be quicker? And I hear my husband ticking. My mother lies on the kitchen floor. I pinch her nose, push air through her lips. Yet I don't see her wish out to the, her garden, midnight dark and flecked with fireflies. I can never move fast enough. I'm speeding on the quantum highway, pushing 75, 80. Radio towers lose their grip. Songs flutter from rap to gospel. I'm speeding along the quantum highway, moving so quickly I'm standing still. I can never move fast enough. I'm speeding down the quantum highway and I'm in a chapel with a small black box tightly clasped to hold the cremains that yell and scratch to escape. I'm speeding over the quantum highway and the dust that was my mother Looms into the stained glass light, or maybe it's my father, or my sister, my husband, and so many friends. I carry them in my lungs, under my fingernails, and on the soles of my shoes. Track them up carpeted stairs to a room still painted the green shade of blue I loved as a child. I throw back the sheets, only to find myself already there. I'm speeding the quantum highway, and I sit at the foot of my bed, guarding the door, making sure I don't drift away. 
and I will read just one more poem. I see my time is coming up. Uh, this last poem is recently ran in Swim, Swim Journal, and I was so delighted to see it there. And I thought it would be a good one to close with. Prayer for rooms were forbidden to enter. May this day that paces the linoleum hall find you, blinds raised, shadows folded on a closet shelf. May you embrace the hissing air, forgive the ventilator and infusion pump. May your walls slip from your shoulders to reveal other rooms, rooms you almost, and in your forgetfulness, may you leave every door ajar. Okay. Thanks so much.